So what do you make of like um, playing with someone else or other people who have kind of mixed setups or where there's electronics or maybe where what's happening or more importantly what can happen isn't really clear? Like what, what is your, like as a performer, like how do you go into a situation like that playing with someone? Um, I think the, the thing that comes to my mind is that the, the gesture doesn't give so much uh, of, a, of a hint of what's going on, so, and so, but sometimes it can be misleading, like, I don't know, like, for example, you are playing a, a physical instrument, but there's also many other sounds that are coming, so I do look at your hands, but sometimes it's not uh, uh, clear what, what happens when you so I, have, I think I have to trust the, my ears, really, yeah. and kind of understand. I kind of understand what is the process that you're doing, not like, oh, he's doing a ring modulation, blah blah blah. But <laughs> like, when you do that, it does this. Hmm. You know, this kind of association with the gesture. I don't know. Maybe it's kind of learning a bit of what what you do there. Yeah, yeah. What you can do, and then. Reacting, I, don't know. I mean that that's kind of what I was thinking as well like there's a little an aspect of it that's almost like decoding mm -hmm. so like if it, like if you know I see your setup and like I've, I've heard you play before and I have some idea of some of the worlds that I can go to but it's still it's a bunch of button and knobs that I don't know I mean they could be literally mapped to anything like you could turn a knob and then later on it could be different so like the correlation between what you physically do and the sounding results can is almost irrelevant the guitar part similar to like with the drum part I can kind of see and make sense of and, and some of that makes sense and I can also physically like acoustically hear it as well which helps to a certain extent mm -hmm. but there's a part of it that's it's it's kind of interesting where it's almost if you're listening to like really complex music sometimes your brain goes into like an analysis mode mm -hmm. and you try to like understand what's happening like you're listening to the music but then you try to 
counting and doing things like this. So, so like we're playing, but there's an aspect of it that's almost like trying to understand like what's happening, which is, I was thinking about it now because I mean, as my setup's getting more and more complicated over the years and then playing with someone else's setup, there's, there's an opaqueness that, that I won't understand. Mm -hmm. And some of it might be useful to know. So like, as you said, like I can try to sort of make associations and like, you know, okay, this knob's the volume, that I, I understand that one, or other things, but um, how useful that is to know versus how useful it is to just trust your ears, uh -huh. and how, because you, it's hard to turn off certain parts of our listening, so like, our brain will start doing stuff, and you can't be like, no, I don't want to think, you know, so your brain will do what it does, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's a weird one, because at the same time as just trusting your ears, generally speaking, if you're in the room with someone else, there's still like a... A thing like a communication that happens that we're very used to as musicians where like mm -hmm. you know you, you might move and that that'll mean something yeah. so I, I think that's an important thing to to still use whereas if we had like a wall here mm -hmm. I would only be using my ears but I would lose that yeah. so it, it's a it's there's something about like not wanting a wall there or here mm -hmm. um, but at the same time not spending the whole time trying to understand the process of what's happening like what is what's happening technically or, or whatever, um, which is interesting because well, it's a, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think for me, I would, I would want to say that it's, it's that, like, I want to understand a little bit, but not so much. And at the same time, I don't want to just ignore it and only do this because yeah. that, that may not necessarily, I don't know, you know? Yeah. yeah I think it's a nice place to, to be when, as you were talking, I remembered some of the, I think most of the experiences I've had in the last couple of years of improvising, at least when I was in, in Berlin, they're mostly with computers. Mm. So everybody's playing computer. <laughs> so that's the most extreme case now. There's a, yeah. even the classic joke that people are just checking yeah. their email and the sound <laughs> is doing itself. And to so improvise with computers, and everybody's playing computer, it's like, it's completely opaque. You, know? you can't, you have no idea what's happening. Even if you have a, you know, MIDI controller or something, there's no way. So, I don't know, I think that's a bit too extreme for mm. me. Somehow, the two. it's only the, you can only trust your ears and sometimes you don't know who's doing what. Yeah. That, Maybe that's too much, I think. Yeah, with, with situations like that, when I've played in, in circumstances like that, I find it really hard when, even, because even, our sounds are very different, but they're, the electronic sounds are still kind of electronic sounds. But the fact that we're coming out of different speakers helps a ton, I think. Yeah. Like if we're both coming out of there, it starts to get a little bit more difficult. And if you have multiple people with laptops mm -hmm. and then there's the sounds are coming out of a PA that are over there, it's like really, really hard because it's sometimes even difficult to know if it's your own sound. Like you'll do the thing, it's like, you know, it, was it doing something or not? I don't know, but you heard a sound. So it's like, oh, okay, that's me. But it's like, no, wait. Yeah, yeah. It, it isn't me, <laughs> uh, which can sometimes happen. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's a weird one. Like, like I was, I was speaking to somebody about um, the sort of this platter instrument that I'm working on, and um, he has a much more. Uh, he's using like an actual DJ controller, so it's like big, and like the platters are big, and everything is a lot more legible. And I was talking to him about this, and because of the logistics of my setup, I I don't want that. I don't want like a big huge thing here. So it's a small platter. Mm -hmm. And because of where it needs to be, it's kind of out of, this, out of the way. So if you were an audience member over there, you wouldn't see this at all. So I'm here doing this stuff. And yeah. for all you know, I'm just like, and it wasn't, it wasn't a concern to me because like, I'm for me to do what I want with this, it needs to be the size and where it is, mm -hmm. but there's a legibility that's, that's, um, not there potentially for an audience. Whereas with the laptop, as you said, it's a very extreme version of that. So even if they have a controller, if it's behind the laptop screen, you still see the Apple anyway. It's like there's, there's no, uh, you know, and some people do the thing. I don't know if you've seen like, like where they have a controller, like something like yours, but they have it tilted up a little bit and like they're standing and like to try to make it a, a more visible thing, which is cool. But I don't know, like, I don't know. I, I have two minds about that. Cause I, I, I really don't like, um, when acoustic or instrumental musicians, play in a overly gestural way. So like a violinist and they're like, it's this thing or pianist is like, you know, this gigantic thing. And sometimes that's, you know, it's part of the thing, but like, I think through tradition that has just become magnified. So your teacher does this thing. So you do this thing. And then like generations later, like to, you know, play one note on the violin is like a, <sighs> bing, 
you know, and it's like it, it's it doesn't require that to happen. So at the same time, I'm not like into this idea of like having this bringing that gestural language to electronic instruments. I think it's mm -hmm. it's not necessary. But there's something about legibility that is interesting and related to what we're talking about in a different way. I kind of went off on a tangent there, but um, it is something that I think about, and it is kind of related to the same thing of like the opacity and and what it means. And I guess the main difference is like as a performer playing with someone else versus like as an audience member watching someone else. Because mm -hmm. I think they're, they're kind of different um, expectations. Yeah, I, I don't know if, it, I totally get what you mean, like doing, if, if like twisting a knob, but doing like a very <laughs> big gesture. Yeah, now it's, distortion is on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's, I don't know, like to some extent, it's part of the, um, the body language that we have and that we have while we're playing together as musicians. As you said, like we, there's some body movements that kind of indicate where the thing could be going, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just repeating what you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, some, it's like... Uh, but I think what I meant is like there's kind of... Um, with, the, with the electronic sounds, I think there's a kind of a tendency to go really inward for me I think because they became they become super abstract so I can do like this and I, and I move like half a centimeter and it does a big change in the sound and no one will have a clue what happened <laughs> yeah. Like you, yeah, yeah. right next to me yeah and so sometimes it kind of helps to remember that you should communicate a little bit what you're doing maybe yeah. I don't know yeah I mean it's interesting because sometimes it's it's it's, it's so here, I mean, I've set up a patch and I can kind of see what I've recorded in the buffer, um, which I looked over a little bit, but at some points, particularly at the, the very end here, I had like, like just, I was just on one little moment of the sample moving back and forth. Looking at my instrument, I don't know where that sound is. Mm -hmm. Like, so it could be anywhere. So I can kind of look over, but um, if I didn't have the screen there, I would, I would kind of know as little as you. Like if I did this and the second half of that buffer was noisy stuff that I recorded earlier, yeah. I will be just as surprised if I do this. It's like, <laughs> so I, I didn't know that was going to happen either. So there's like a, sometimes when working with uh, live sampling anyways, what you may have in the buffer may not necessarily be what you think is in the buffer. So mm -hmm. sometimes the gesture, it, it can be very separated from the result, even though my intention, so like I might want to do like a little, little gesture. So I'll go in there and do a thing. But what sounds from that is, you know, it could be anything and I could be just as sure. surprised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also sometimes with encoders, like I have this controller that doesn't have, um, it's, they're not knobs, they're encoders, so they're no, endless, so, yeah. and they just have an indication, like with a light here, so you know more or less where is the, the maximum value, where is the minimum, but other than that you don't know, you have to, <laughs> to find out. Yeah, yeah. And with a knob at least you have like a, you know, a pointer, that, okay, it's like a three, yeah, yeah, yeah. seven, or also, it will stop at some point, so you know, I'm at the maximum. Exactly. <laughs> it won't go up anymore. Um, yeah, should I play some more? Yeah.